Welcome to the Bold Analysis. For the last one week, we have been telling you guys that there is some rebellion that is building and a crack is emerging between Kenya Kwanzaa, Kalenjin Wing and Uda Wing. And many of you took us for granted that we were actually running a propaganda. So I want you to listen to an audio of Mutahi Kahiga, the Nyeri governor, speaking about something that will blow your mind. I have listened to it, and of course, it's going to be the basis of this analysis. Without much ado, this is the audio. Mambo, na tungetaka tuseme sasa kwamba hii safari tutaandamana tukiwa pamoja au tunaweza pia kusema kama hatutakikani twende pamoja sisi hatujaolewa na mtu yeyote ambaye akafikiria ati kuna wakati anaweza kuamua siku moja atatupeleka hivi kesho anatufanya hivi sisi tulitazama jana na tukaona kwamba kuna watu ambao wanajaribu kuleta ukora katika siasa Mambo ambao tunafanya tunafanya tukiwa kitu kimoja tumekubaliana lakini jana tuliona kuna watu wanatuletea mchezo na ndipo tunawaambia hiyo ndiyo sababu tulimchagua kanini kega sisi watu wa UDA na tutaendelea kuwachagua watoto wetu kama tunaletewa mchezo kama huo tungetaka tuseme bado ni mapema katika hii harusi lakini dalili ya mvua ni mawingu tukae macho na tunasema tukiwa hapa nyeri Inchi ya mau mau iliwe to tihaka wa majuru. Asante sana mungu wa bariki. Mambo na tungetaka tuseme sasa kuamba i safari tutaandama na tukiwa pamoja au tunaweza pia kusema kama hatutakikani tuende pamoja sisi atujaolewa na mtu yeyote ambaye akafikiria ati kuna wakati anaweza kuamua siku moja atatupeleka hivi kesho anatufanya hivi sisi tulitazama jana na tukaona kwamba kuna watu ambao wanajaribu kuleta ukora katika siasa mambo ambao tunafanya tunafanya tukiwa kitu kimoja tumekubaliana lakini jana tuliona kuna watu wanatuletea mchezo na ndipo tunawaambia hiyo ndiyo sababu tulimchagua kanini kega sisi watu wa UDA na tutaendelea kuwachagua watoto wetu kama tunaletewa mchezo kama huo. Tungetaka tuseme bado ni mapema katika hii harusi. Lakini dalili ya mvua ni mawingu. Tukae macho na tunasema tukiwa hapa Nyeri inchi ya mau mau iliwe to tihaka kwa majuru. Asante sana Mungu awabariki. Mutai Kahiga is a very senior politician. And I am also persuaded to say that he is also in good books with Rigadi Geshagwa, who is the running mate or who is the deputy president coming from Nyeri. I analyzed here that at one point Kahiga was having found it very difficult even to name the his his ministers because of interference from the executive way and that clip he spoke publicly that's not an, an indoor meeting he was speaking in an event that was attended by locals during the swearing in of his new sex uh, of, of, of cabinet executive members so during that event he is saying that what they saw in state house was just them not being given what they deserve we analyzed that two names the two people that were being fronted by deep state for the airla but they sacrificed and got a united front and in their unity two mount kenya sons got an opportunity to head to airla in what can also signal a movement um, towards the Gede Gashagwa wing. That uh, Mutai Kahiga 
He's speaking one from point of knowledge. He's actually saying he was in state house. So he's not doing a hearsay. That is number one. Number two, Mutai Kahiga is speaking the voice or rather is delivering a message that seems to have come from a host of elected leaders in Mount Kenya. And what really should worry the deputy president or what should worry President Ruto is that the government is barely two months and it was formed in a very delicate situation because the narrative was a breakup or a fallout between William Ruto and former president. Now between him and President Uhuru Kenyatta, they broke up after being together for close to seven years. The breakup, I think, was somewhere in 2018. And they got they, they first came into office in 2013. So it was like after six years. And they broke up with President Uhuru, former President Uhuru Kenyatta. But then that was breaking up with the president. On this one, the elected leaders. And that message was strategically targeting Mount Kenya people who were attending that event. I need to tell you that even if you just uh, do a critical analysis on the audio, you realize that the people that were there were actually clapping. And so it's not just something that someone was just saying for the sake of saying. He actually meant it. And the person who sent me that audio uh, was actually telling me that he, he spoke, it was a long speech, and this was part of what was written. He was speaking and actually coming out to talk about a unity of purpose in Mount Kenya. Let me tell you, this is a leader who is serving his second term as governor. His role is not under threat, even from the executive. And they picked him strategic because he's not in parliament. He's not close to William Ruto, actually. So there is no way that he can be punished at he, because he has already won the governor's seat. He's not going to seek re-election. He has served his second term. And that will be the end of it. Mount Kenya is getting irritated. And I just want to draw a very good observation that the conversation about extending term limit, or rather removing the term limit, had caused some jitters. And that conversation, Sam Samson Cherenge came out to support it, saying that if it goes to Senate, you're going to support it. Um, Sylvain Sosoro, the chief whip in the National Assembly, I think the deputy chief whip, also spoke about it. No Mount Kenya politician spoke about the conversation about the term limit. And it took President Ruta himself to come out to say that under my watch, are we, going to, we are not going to mutilate the constitution. I am persuaded to feel that people, are, people who are in government or people who are close to power have realized that that talk was not a child's play. That talk was not coincidence. It was a well-organized steam something and they're testing waters. Mount Kenya seems to have realized that Ruto wants to cling to power. That Ruto wants to stay in power. So on that, uh, of course, there are people that have ambitions there. If you're talking about 75, then how long is it? There seems to be signs of some betrayal. And I can tell you this. Apart from what we can see in the political arena, there seems to be a very well, highly guarded secret pact between William Ruto and Gadi Geshagwa. Apart from Rigi G being a running mate, rather finally becoming deputy president, Rigi G also funded the campaigns. And so because of the funding, something must have been paid down between the two. This Ruto Gamer wedding is very shaky. And I want to make observations from just that clip, uh, drawing from that clip. Ruto is applying what is called divide and rule tactics in Mount Kenya. He actually wants to engineer division. That division, critically, it will happen. You know, that is nearly governor speaking, 
And as he was speaking, Ruto is also very close. He has taken Kimani Chungu and Moses Kuri to the cabinet. Uh, they are close to him. And now the Kiambu wing is also around him. Kimani Wamateng is not saying anything. Sesin Barira is also on the other side. I can tell you that that statement speaks volumes. That there are people that when they are going to support William Ruto, there are people who are not. And that is just the divide and rule. The divide and rule tactic is what was used in the last general election to divide people alongside those who support Uhuru Kenyatta and those who support him. The mountain is split into two. Now, in the next general election, he will also want a, a, a divided mountain because when they're divided, is when you can run with the majority. You have the minority on their wing because you can't go with all of them. That's the possibility because they will most importantly have a presidential candidate. Power brokers who funded the campaigns are calling shots in the background. And the political mouthpiece, the people in the campaign train who believe that they are also supposed to be close to power, are not gaining something. I am wondering how Anthony Moura, who was in the UDA elections board, I think was the chairman of the elections board, is being appointed the chairman of KRA board and people there are people who are in the campaign train like Ketwa Ruguru, like Jaguar who have not got anything I read in the, I think is the one of the newspapers that there were people who funded William Ruto and they even went they were even in the party ranks to make sure that things go fine now these poor brokers are the people that are running the shots from state house. They are the real deep state, and the young politicians that are out here will not see. What is the thing here is, who once said that you will regret? In fact, he said only three months. He was telling the leaders that look here, William Ruto is after power. It's nothing to do with empowerment. It's nothing to do with the supporting the hustler. It's nothing to do with that. But William Ruto is out to take power and he's using you to get power so that's what is here this seems to be saying in that clip that come out to take and it's because they feel that they have been used to get power and not really behind it man kenya could also be strategically issuing these threats so that they can push william ruta to the corner and favor the region this was this is the kind of strategy that was used against Uhuru Kenyatta. Remember, Moses Skore coming up uh, coming up with the narrative that Uhuru was elected by the people of Mount Kenya and he neglected the region. And Uhuru had to rush back to Mount Kenya and fast track a couple of projects so that he could hold grip. But as they were going there, Uhuru was trying to do things, but the elected political leaders were getting charged and they were already spilling the venom against President uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. In Mount Kenya. And it was a total black. I can also see the same tactic being applied here. That someone already wants to engineer this, to bring these conversations to light so that they will shake William Ruto. Because I can tell you, without game of vote and with a well organized opposition, Ruto can serve one term. It's very possible. Without gamer, you remain the Kalenjin campaign. That's that's it. So they seem to have realized that. That that could be happening. They're seeing some appointments being given here and there. They're not seeing what they're getting. That's why they're calling the shots. I want to feel that Mutai Kahiga had a message and he was sent to deliver. And he has delivered it. 